Greetings all, my name is Angel Shade and welcome back to the Arsenal. In this video we will run down the Call of Duty 2 rifles, both the bolt action and semi-automatic variety. Firstly, a little note. I will no longer read out the stats, they will be posted for a reasonable duration on screen for all of you to see and I will only comment out anything relevant to the stats of the guns. Also note, all guns covered in this video have been carried over from the previous Call of Duty title, the United Offensive, so I won't repeat the historical notes, but I will provide a link in the description for the video that has the historical notes for them. Right, now let us start covering the rifles of Call of Duty 2, and I'll hit things off with the arguably best bolt action in the game, the German Army's Car 98K. Due to developers wish to keep all guns balanced out between armies, all bolt rifles share the same damage stats, which is something I already noted as a bad idea when I covered the handguns. The car will in most cases kill in one shot, just like all bolt rifles will. It has a very smooth bolt action which results in the second best rate of fire, and since it's reloaded by a stripper clip, it reloads pretty fast as well. What puts this rifle above the rest is the simple and clear sighting plane, which makes aiming down the sight a hell of a lot easier. In the campaign it's often the best long range choice, and since it's used by the German army, there is always ammo laying around for it, just waiting for your greedy paws to nab it. In multiplayer it is the most desirable backup weapon to have, especially for players running around with submachine guns as primary weapon. Car can be fired from the hip, but any hits scored in such a way are a luck shot at best. The scoped version of the Car 98 serves as the German army's sniper weapon. It for all intents and purposes behaves like its unscoped ver version, apart from a few details. Most important being that the reload is now significantly slowed down, since the scoped version cannot be reloaded by a stripper clip on the account of that massive telescopic sight being in the way, which means scoped car has to be reloaded one round at a time, which is very slow. But the reload can be interrupted early, so deciding when to reload and how many rounds to reload is a skill, a skill you eventually master after being hit in the face with the butt end of a rifle one too many times while reloading. Like the unscoped version, it is best to refrain from engaging enemies up close and personal. Next we have the good old Lee Enfield, the British bolt action rifle. It's considerably more yellow now than it was in the previous game, and I'm not sure if that's a design decision to make the rifle differentiate from the others more or has something to do with the wood it was made from. Whatever the case, damage-wise the Lee kills in one shot as long as you don't hit the enemy in the foot. The Lee has the slowest rate of fire among the bolts, however, only by a small margin, and you don't effectively feel it when playing. Lee's iron sights, however, are somewhat obstructed, which makes aiming at their really far targets difficult. But Lee makes up for this with its larger ammunition capacity. The rifle's full name is Short Magazine Lee Enfield, and don't let the short part fool you, because while Lee has a short magazine, other bolt rifles have none, no magazine at all, which counts as 5 extra rounds for Lee. 10 rounds between reloads instead of usual 5, a Lee Enfield rifleman can put out twice as many shots before reload which more than makes up for its negligibly slow rate of fire. Also, Lee reloads by stripper clips as well, so reloading it is done quickly too. Keep in mind that you have to spend at least 5 rounds before you can reload once, and spending all 10 rounds will make 2 stripper clips being loaded into the rifle. Like with Car, there is a scoped variant of the Lee, uh, and finally the Brits have their own designated sniper rifle no longer having to rely on the American Springfield. Scoped Lee behaves virtually the same as the unscoped version, and for the most part all stats are the same. However, uh, however, unlike the car, Lee's scope is offset to the side, it's not directly above the breech, 
so a scope leak can still be reloaded by stripper clips, which is a definitive advantage to other sniper rifles. Add that to the scoped aiming, which makes up for the obtrusive iron sights, and suddenly you realize how awesome this rifle is. Still, it's just a bolt action, so unless you want your ass handed back to you with a bullet plug lodged in it, I suggest you keep yourself away from short-ranged short firefights. It's a sniper rifle. Use it accordingly. You get to use Lee and Scoped Lee as a member of the British Army, in a couple of missions in a campaign, but the only ammo you will find is the one dropped by your dead allies. In multiplayer, of course, you can pick it out on the British team, or by stealing off of a corpse of a British team player. Third bolt action is, of course, the Russian Mosin Nagant. Damage-wise, again, it's the same as the other bolt actions, and it will kill in one shot unless, again, you have some weird fetish for feet. Only in this case, an absurdly weird fetish of shooting feet from a distance with a high-powered bolt action pride of motherland rifle. Mosin has the fastest rate of fire among the bolts, which doesn't say much considering the rifle's usage. If anything, it just means most in second bullet will go out, go out a split second before any opposing rifle, provided the opposing rifle is not also a Mosin. The Mosin shares a lot of tri traits with the car, has the same magazine size, but it reloads slightly faster. It has a very unobtrusive iron sights, which makes aiming easy, and from personal experience, I can say that for reasons unknown, it seems to be a bit better when fired from the hip. This last bit might just be me, because there is no way of determining it for, for sure, but hey, for me it seems to be true, and regardless, it's still a bolt action and you shouldn't use it up close and personal anyway. The scoped Mosin is the glorious Russian army's designated sniper rifle, filled with the might of Comrade Stalin. Well, it's most... Regards like the other sniper rifles, and like the car, the scope gets in the way, so stripper clip reloading is replaced by reloading one round at a time. And like cars, you can interrupt it early when you hear the angry Huns coming to skin you alive with automatic weapons, and you desperately need to start firing back. Scoped Mosin also has the most visual difference with other rifles, being wrapped in a blanket. This is because all Russian maps are winter maps, so it's intended to make the rifle easier to handle, i.e. operator's hand not getting stuck to the barrel or scope for, or because it's frozen, and for snow not getting in the metal bits and corroding it. It has no functional purpose in the game, it just looks pretty cool. You'll get plenty of ammo for both Mosin's versions in a campaign, but in multiplayer you can only use it if you're on the Russian team, or snatch them off a Russian team's corpse. And lastly, we have the Springfield, used by the Yanks. The American army once again has no unscoped bolt action rifle, but it does have two semi automatic rifles, which really makes me think what kind of balancing did the developer team have in mind when they were compiling the team weapon lists. But unlike the other sniper rifles, the Springfield doesn't have any exceptional qualities, it's just a sniper rifle. Its rate of fire is nearly Neatly nested between the car and the Lee, it reloads one round at a time like scoped car and Mosin. Kills in short one shot unless you really have a thing for feet and keep hitting them instead of those much pro more prominent targets such as the head or chest. The only time you will see this weapon in the campaign is when it's issued to you, and in multiplayer it's a lot of course simpler because you either pick it up as a weapon of the American team or kill the one using it and steal it. Like all bolts, it sucks at close quarters, but overall it simply lacks any character or identity for me. It doesn't have any identifying features that put it above the other rifles. Wait, it does have one feature I like, its sound. It sounds like a freaking lightning when it fires. All said and done, it's perfectly fine sniper and as, as such it performs as well as the other three, it just doesn't have any special quality that would make you like it more than you like the other three. Moving on to semi-automatic rifles now. Following United Offensive and with the purpose of making all four armies balanced, each one has its own semi-automatic rifle now, all of them dealing pretty much the same damage. Apart from Yanks, who have two semi-automatic rifles and they have no unscoped bolt rifles, because somehow that's supposed to be balanced. Anyway, leaving the nonsensical ideas of balance aside, 
Let's start with the German army's Gewehr 43. Now, on paper, the Gewehr should have many selling points that make it an awesome weapon. A 10 round clip with decent reload speed, it has a clear sighting plane, it's accurate and has almost no damage fall off, making it equally effective damage wise at all ranges. However, there are several issues with this weapon. Recoil, for example. Well, there is not much of it, it is significant enough to make the sights bounce around over the target, preventing you from landing sufficient shots at distance accurately. Rate of fire, while fire capped at 444 rounds per minute, is actually slower, and at medium ranges, opponents with automatic weapons will mostly get the better of you. The weapon simply refuses to fire at the fire rate it could fire with and makes the gun stutter and hiccup. This being said, the weapon is by no means bad, it just takes some getting used to. Once you get to grips with the recoil stuttering, scoring kills with it becomes easy. Especially since this weapon has virtually no damage falloff and takes only 2-3 to three hits to kill a target. In a single player campaign you can find even a scoped version of this weapon and there it performs magnificently. However, if you find yourself on a modded server which has this weapon unlocked, you will find that it has way too much recoil to be effectively used in multiplayer. One cosmetic change from the variant used in United Offensive is a different color, since it could easily be confused with SVT-40 otherwise. Historically this is not an accident. As I mentioned in the historical notes before, Gewehr 43 was based on the captured SVT rifles and as such shares many similarities in design which was obvious even in game. Now Gewehr is greenish brown, so most visual confusion is avoided. And speaking of SVTs, the SVT 40 is design wise same as it was in United Offensive and stats wise very similar to Gewehr 43. However, the SVT is a notch or two easier to use. It also sports a 10 round magazine, has the same reload speed, same fire cap like the Gewehr. Thing is, it's easier to squeeze out the faster fire rate out of the SVT. And it also has a very clear sighting plane, so it shares all the bonuses of the Gewehr and avoids most of the issues, biggest one being recoil. The SVT hands beautifully and has a very controllable recoil, making it a very effective tool comparable to the effectiveness of the Garand, for example. It's a tad more effective in hip firing as well, so it won't underperform when used in close quarters combat, even though this situation should still be avoided, much like Gewehr, the SVT excels in medium range combat, so always try to position yourself accordingly. You can find this weapon regularly in the Russian campaign, although ammo becomes scarce and your dead allies only way to refill it. The SVT feels like a proper Soviet tool, robust and strong. Even its firing sound sounds like a jacked up nail gun or something. In multiplayer this weapon makes an excellent backup, so picking it up when you can is a good idea, especially if you're a submachine gunner. The other two semi-auto rifles both belong to the American army, however the M1 Garand is shared with the British, because because reasons I don't know, it's this lightning bolt of laziness that occasionally affects the Call of Duty development team and makes them take shortcuts where they there don't have to be any. In any case, M1 Garand, while it has the same damage stat, like the Gewehr and SVT, it's a lot deadlier mostly due to a faster fire rate. And as if that isn't utterly unfair, it also has a barely any recoil and a very good iron sight. The effective range is comparable to that of a bolt-action rifle as well, and to make things even sweeter, the weapon behaves quite well in hip firing. All things considered, the weapon is quite overpowered, since it's quite effective even at closer ranges. It has one problem though, and it's based on a historical sort of fact. Uh, the fact that you can't reload an M1 Garand mid-clip. See, Garand uses a special spring clip that launches when the last round is fired with an audible PING sound, which I already covered in a previous video. It's not completely true, however. You can reload a Garand mid-clip. It just takes longer and is not very practical, since Garand was designed so it can be reloaded in a snap. And that's pretty much the spring's one true purpose. 
Anyway, in game you have to fire the last shot before you you before you can reload again automatically. It's fast, so that's good, but having no control over it makes it tricky. Since that ping can be heard by anyone nearby and you can bet your ass everyone will hump you the moment they hear it. Also the magazine hold, holds only 8 rounds and with up to 3 hits required for a kill you don't have that much space for misses and mistakes. Still Garen's pretty much on top of the tree when it comes to semi-auto rifles as long as you learn how to pick your shots and avoid entering a gunfight with two rounds in the clip left. And lastly we have the other American uh, semi-automatic rifle, the M1A1 carbine. Its stats might make it seem like an overpowered version of the Garen since it has the same damage stat. However, there are several things to keep in mind with it. Carbine has a dreadful damage falloff and a lot less efficient range than the Garand or any other semi-auto rifle in the game. That being said, the carbine's extremely accurate. It has very low recoil and a large 15 round deep magazine. Excellent iron sights make aiming simple as well and because the gun is light it provides excellent mobility. The weapon has some drawbacks, most notable being the lack of power. It doesn't have the rate of fire needed to deal with submachine gunners, nor the effective range to deal with riflemen, so you have to employ hit and run or ambush tactics in order to be efficient with it. While it's not exactly fair for the Yanks to sport two semi-auto rifles where other armies have one, since this one requires such a limited playstyle, the limited usefulness balances it out somewhat. Well, personally, I love this gun. It's the only American weapon apart from the BAR I really enjoy playing with, mainly because it requires a different play, different play style, and it's definitely a harasser's gun, and I am definitely a harasser, picking wounds at a distance or finishing people off at medium ranges. Keep cover between you and the target, and this needle gun will make your enemies dance. And with this, we have covered all of the rifles of Call of Duty 2. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and until the next video!